Let's find the electric field intensity due to an infinite plane of charge. Let's put that plane of charge in the xy plane. This charge density will be represented by rho sub s and that will be in coulombs per meter squared. To the right here we have a view of our plane of charge from the edge. Let's see what we can determine about the form of our electric field intensity from the symmetry of our plane. So let's imagine a charge sitting somewhere above our, our plane. So let's uh, put that charge right here. Now to this charge Looking to the right, it sees this infinite plane of charge, and looking to the left, it sees this infinite plane of charge. So the force in the x direction from the charges to the left and the force in the minus x direction from the charges to the right are going to balance. So there will be no net force in the x direction on this charge. And you can reason similarly to argue there is no force in the y direction. The only force this charge is going to experience if it's above the plane and positive is in the plus c direction. Similarly if you place some charge below the plane there again will be no force exerted on it in the x and y directions but only a force in the minus z direction. So above the plane, the form of the electric field intensity is some amplitude, which we'll call E sub z in the z direction. And below the plane, the electric field intensity is some amplitude in the minus A sub z direction. In general, the electric field intensity is going to be a function of x, y, and z. So this E sub z can be a function of x, y, and z. But now what we're going to do is argue from the symmetry of this infinite plane that E sub z does not depend on x and y. So imagine you're somewhere above your plane of charge. Now if you move slowly in the x direction, you would not be able to tell you're moving because to your right and to your left and in the plus y and in the minus y directions there will always be this infinite plane of charge. So just like you cannot tell you're moving because of the symmetry, the electric field intensity will not depend on x. And similarly, if you're moving in the y direction, you can't tell you're moving if you're moving slowly because you're always going to see this infinite plane of charge in whatever direction you look. So your electric field intensity will not depend on the y component. So now we're going to apply Gauss's law that the integral of the electric flux density field over some closed Gaussian surface is equal to the charge enclosed by that surface. So we're going to choose a Gaussian surface that matches the symmetry of our electric field intensity. So the surface I'm going to choose is a cylinder oriented such that the top and bottom of the cylinder is parallel to the xy plane. So over here on the left, I'm showing the top of the, of the cylinder. And the surface area of, that, of this cylinder, of the top and bottom, let's call S. So the charge enclosed by this Gaussian surface is the charge enclosed in the cylinder here where the cylinder intersects our plane. And so that charge enclosed is just the charge density rho sub s times 
the cross-sectional area of this intersection between the cylinder and the plane, or S. So the integral of d dot ds is the integral of d dot ds along the side of the cylinder plus the integral of d dot ds on the top of the cylinder plus the integral of d dot ds on the bottom of the cylinder. And that's equal to our charge enclosed. So we've argued that our electric field intensity and hence our electric flux density has the form such that on the top of our cylinder we have d sub z a sub z and on the bottom of our cylinder minus d sub z a sub z. So the electric flux density is parallel to the sides of our cylinder so the integral of d dot ds on the sides of the cylinder is going to be zero. Now on the top of our cylinder since the direction of the electric flux density is outward and everywhere on the surface it has the same value the integral of d dot ds around the top is just going to be dz times our surface area. Similarly on the bottom the electric flux density field has the same value everywhere on the bottom and it's directed outward everywhere. So the integral of d dot ds on the bottom, the amount of electric flux leaving the cylinder through the bottom is plus dz times s. So we have 2 dz times s equals rho sub s times s or dividing both sides by 2s we get the electric flux density field component in the z direction is equal to rho sub s over 2. And notice there's no dependence on the coordinate z here. So it doesn't matter where we placed our cylinder. In other words, it doesn't matter what this distance, this length of our cylinder was, we would get the same result. So that is telling us that d sub z is independent of the coordinate z. Here's a depiction of our electric flux density field. For z greater than zero, the electric flux density field is going to equal rho sub s over 2 in the a sub z direction. And for z less than zero, the electric flux density will have the same magnitude, rho sub s over 2, but it will be in the minus a sub z direction. And this result makes a lot of sense. If you think about this charge density, the charge density on our plane is rho sub s. So emanating from that charge density has to be rho sub s coulombs per meter squared of electric flux. And that electric flux can either go in the plus c or the minus c direction. So half of it will go in, off in the plus c direction and the other half in the minus c direction and you can again see that the electric flux density field is going to be independent of the value of your z coordinate. And the electric field intensity for z greater than zero is rho sub s over two times our permittivity in the z direction and for z less than zero the electric field intensity is rho sub s over 2 times the permittivity in the minus z direction.